What's up you guys, Shardimus Prime here doing another Transformers action figure review on the 10 year anniversary Transformers Masterpiece MPM3 Bumblebee. If you're trying to pick this up, you can get it at Toys R Us. It's a Toys R Us exclusive, which I didn't mention earlier. Big thanks to Alfonso for finding this out in the wild for me, getting me a good deal on this. Anyway, on the side of the packaging, you can see we get Bumblebee right over there. And then on the very back, you can see some product shots. You can see the helmet and everything and the weapons an articulated hand, and then on the side you get some more product shot of Bumblebee. It says Transformers Masterpiece Movie Series on the top, and not much more at the bottom, so let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's our Masterpiece Movie Bumblebee out of the packaging. Now, a pretty interesting thing about this alt mode right over here is that it really does take after uh, the production copy of the 2010 Camaro, and uh, not as much as the prototype that we actually saw in the movie. Yeah, but there are some aspects of both with this piece. He does show up not totally trans transformed. He does arrive in alt mode like this, but the doors aren't really attached and the hood separated a little bit. But anyway, this is a beautiful looking piece. I absolutely love it. Let's get a closer look. So I want to give a shout out and thank you to my buddy Siri Emerald for swinging by my place. And when he came over, he came over with an actual 2010 first production run of the Camaro. And man, I was so stoked to see an actual Bumblebee in person. It was just very, very awesome. And this figure right over here, coincidentally, has a lot of aspects from that first production run, but it also has some mixed in parts or uh, characteristics of the 2007 prototype. Uh, one thing that I thought that was interesting is the Chevy logo right over here. It does look a little bit different from uh, the actual vehicle. Uh, the vehicle itself has gold on the inside and a silver Silver trim. This looks like it's just mostly gold, or if anything, it has gold on the outside with silver on the inside, which would be the opposite. And then there's some other little details, like for instance, on his production copy, there's an Autobot symbol right underneath, right over here, uh, where uh, this doesn't have that. Uh, the prototype has very clearly silver uh, hubcaps right over here, and uh, or silver rims, and this is the uh, gunmetal rims. He actually swapped his to get the silver, but I think uh, his came with the gunmetal color right there. And then we also get the fin on the production copy, but the 2007 prototype that you see in the movie does not have the fin over there. So yeah, so just little details like that. And I'm not mentioning every single little thing, but uh, one thing I also wanted to mention is that I scuffed mine right over there. I'm so sad. Yeah, the paint came off. My dad loves cars, and he actually checks in on the Shardimus Prime YouTube channel when I review actual vehicles that are, you know, master mostly the Masterpiece Transformers that are actual vehicles. So I wanted to bring this over and show it to him, and when I put it back in the box, I had scuffed it. So yeah, it didn't come like that. I did that myself. But I really like this figure a lot. Uh, it's nice and hefty, really good size. I think the deco came out very clean. I would prefer to see blue tinted windows instead of just the transparent clear. But, you know, that's just a minor nitpick. There are some issues with tabbage. Um, oh, another big difference between this and the actual 2007 prototype is the color yellow. That's a huge difference. Is that to, the 2010 production copy has this lighter yellow color that you see on this figure. But the prototype uh, has a slightly darker orangish hue in the yellow. And that's what we're used to seeing in the movie. So it is slightly different. Um, but, yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was the tabbage. Uh, there's this thing going on at the very front. I'd seen somebody do a review on this and they said that you need to tighten or loosen the screw that's right behind this Chevy logo. But yeah, I don't like how that uh, you know rocks back and forth. Now on the actual production copy, there's a mail slot in the very front right over here. But yeah, uh, uh, still I'd rather have it kind of be flush. So I guess I'll tamper with that more later on. And the figure does roll very well. The only thing is that, um, you know, he has weapon storage and it kind of makes things just a little uneven. What happens here is that he has a stinger blaster and you can store it underneath, which I absolutely love that you can do that. But when you push this down in here, what tends to happen is that you tend to push down on these parts 
and these will kind of stick down and that kind of gets in the way just a little bit. So it rolls much better and it's much, much more flush without having the weapon storage. But regardless, he rolls very well. Now to measure out this figure, you can see that Bumblebee is at about six and a half inches across and he's closer to just under two and a half inches tall. And then for your Bumblebee comparison, you can see that we have the Masterpiece Movie Bumblebee next to the Revenge of the Fallen Human Alliance Bumblebee, right? Revenge of the Fallen, I'm pretty sure that's where this one's from. And you can see how different they are. Now this guy definitely has the yellow that was closer to what we see in the movies. Uh, again, this one being much brighter, but it's a different model. Uh, but you can see the similarities and differences. We definitely get a larger vehicle with the Human Alliance figure, that is for sure. And then here's our Masterpiece Movie Bumblebee next to the Deluxe Class Transformers 1 Movie Bumblebee right here. This is the 2007 Concept Camaro. And yeah, that looks pretty cool seeing them side by side. But yeah, you can see uh, the accuracies with the color right here on this one, along with the hubcaps. There is no fin over here where this one does have the fin. So yeah, you could point out those little details. I do like the color on this one more though. This one does definitely remind me more of the movie, but still. Also, you could see the blue tinted windows over here. See, I don't know. I just think that looks a little better. Then here's your Masterpiece Movie Bumblebee next to your regular Masterpiece figure. We have smoke screen right over here. And yeah, so for your Masterpiece comparison, you could see Bumblebee is maybe just a little bit larger than you'd expect. And then here's the Masterpiece Movie Bumblebee next to the Last Night Bumblebee, the first Last Night. I still need to get the new Last Night Bumblebee. And then here's our Masterpiece Movie Bumblebee next to the Marvel Legends Big Time No Let Down Spider-Man. Yeah, take it easy over there, guy. N no stop motion today, don't worry. And then here's the Masterpiece Bumblebee next to the Burger King toy that I use for my transformations. And you can see this little Burger King toy over here actually does capture the correct color of Bumblebee. Oh, I think anyway. So let's get on to the transformation. Will you take yourself away, Bumblebee? All right, good job, Bumblebee. All right, so I, I do want to be very careful with transforming this figure, because I do like it a lot. And I have transformed it several times, so I like to start with the doors right over here. And there we go. And I did read the directions, and uh, it's 38 steps. Okay, so you want to slip this out right over there, take out that that way. And then this whole piece right over here is really awesome the way they did this, the way they engineered this, is that that whole section is going to actually collapse and wrap underneath right over here. It accordions over really nicely, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, we're going to take the arms and we're going to swing them out of the way and get this moving back over here so we can get the arms out of the way. So we're swinging that down, moving this out, swinging this down over here. It's getting a little clumsy because I'm turning the elbow, but we're basically going to Get that tilted back there, straighten that out again, and then get the arms out of the way. And then we can take these panels right here and shift that forward. And you could kind of see the light piping happening a little bit, shifting that forward right there. And then we can, I always get this confused with the head. I like to detach this a little bit, get that out of the way, and then move this down, I, and I always get confused. So it is supposed to go down this way. So you push forward over here on this side, and the head is supposed to swing from the back. But it tends to get caught right around there. But you can see the head is swooping through, and there that goes. So just a little bit tricky. Get that in, move these back in front like how they were just a moment ago. And then you can go ahead and try to connect this door with these wheels right over here. That's supposed to connect right over there. So get that formed. And remember, you always want to slide those out. So get that connected. And then we can do this whole accordion thing, which I really like. So you're going to fold that in, and then fold that in, then fold that in, and then swing this whole thing down underneath, which I just think is great how this works. And then we're going to collapse this right down over here. And then you have this metal piece right there. And we're going to get to that in a second. I just want to get the legs out here. And we're going to take this piece right here, okay? And this is all going to fold into the back of his leg. And what we want to do is get this out of the way so that we can uh, get the leg undone. So you can see how it swings out right there. And then we're going to get this piece over here. This long. This is going to be his heel. This is going to swing down. And we want to get that out of the way. And then take this whole foot piece and get that down. And then move this. And then go ahead and start folding. So this is going to swing up and then come down, and then we're gonna take the tire and move this downward right over here. Go ahead and close this up. You get a tab right there, 
and it goes into this port right here. So you're gonna tab that together, get this little piece, I like to swing that down. This little guy right here swings outward and tabs right in there. It's actually very worth zooming in on so you can see how that little tab goes in there, but it really does help with posing, making sure that that's tabbed in properly. So you can see that, then you wanna pull out the bumblebee toes and then that will make the heel right over there. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and that came untabbed on me, damn it bumblebee, what the hell man? Uh, getting this out of the way and then swinging this out and moving this down, moving the toes down right here and then we're gonna take the wheel and move that down and collapse or fold out the knee which I had done first last time and then Swing this into place, and then get that little tab right in there onto the side of the wheel. Come on, tab in there. That little tab can be a little bit tricky. Then move the heel down, and then go ahead and move this up, and then move that down, sandwiches over, and then get the tab, goes into the tab right there. And then we have the legs all done, and then we have these two pieces on the side. We're gonna swing those down, and we have these Flaps right, we'll get those out of the way so you can move this up and then get that moved up. And then this is going to go ahead and sandwich. And then what we want to do is take these circular holes and go ahead and port right over there. So, gonna go ahead and aim for that and aim for it on the other side right there. So, you lift this up, swing this down, and that rotates. And then scooch this back and tab down right over there. And we got some fingers and a thumb. And then do the same thing to the other side, swing that around and get the fingers and thumb out of the way. And then scoot this back and tab that in. And then what I really like about this figure is that he actually has the lower wing section. Uh, we don't normally see that on Bumblebee action figures, but these pieces right over here, you swing that down and tab that in. You can see the tab section goes in there. You wanna take these pieces and you wanna fold that in like so, and then fold this down right over here like so to complete the transformation. Oh, you also wanna take these little pieces at the very top. Can't forget these little guys and get those facing outward like that. And now we have Bumblebee in his robot mode looking awesome. I really like both modes for this figure a lot, but this robot mode is just a lot of fun. A lot of posing options over here. I think the figure itself just looks absolutely fantastic in robot mode. He does come with this one accessory, so let's get a closer look at that Stinger Blaster and then we'll get a closer look at Bumblebee. So here's Bumblebee's Stinger Blaster as it was while he was in alt mode and I didn't show that you can put this on the very back so you just you know bring that in together it snaps I wish this seemed together a little better you get some serious seamage going on so that's a bit of a gripe but I do like how it looks for the most part very nice metallic silver right over here so I'm really digging that and I do like that they painted the center of it yellow so I think that's pretty neat uh, but yeah you can go ahead and attach this to the back of Bumblebee and just port that into this hole on his back like so you can do that or you can have him actually holding it so what you want to do is you want to kind of transform the right hand back into place and make sure it's a fist come on and it goes right in there now when you do this you want to actually make sure that this panel stays detached and you see how you have this little gray piece right over here and you have this little guy right there. You wanna make sure those two line up and it'll just port right on there and then you can take this tab and it'll tab into the stinger right there and that locks into place. And then you have Bumblebee blasting away. So that's pretty awesome. I do like that. Again, I wish this, you know, came together a little bit better. And yeah, so, but I'm gonna take this off and bring the hand back out and go ahead and put this back over here. Oh, look at that head sculpt. Oh, how could you not love that head sculpt? Look at that, man. I love this gun metal that we're seeing on the face of Bumblebee. Of course, we get the Autobot Deco right there on the tippy tip of the crest of his helmet. Looking really, really nice. I dig this a lot. Now, I do wish the light piping worked a little bit better, but it still works. I mean, just getting this light behind right over here, you can see how his eyes are kind of shining blue, but I have to be right back there for it to really work. So it's a little tricky to see, but you know, 
it's there. It's definitely there. So that's cool that we do get that feature with this piece. He also has the mask feature. So what you want to do, and you got to be careful with this. Ah, dang it. I always screw that up. And I'm leaving this in the video because I made this stupid mistake repeatedly. And I feel like such an idiot that I deserve to publicly shame myself. Uh, ah, God dang it. Okay, so trying this again. So all you have to do is just lift this piece up right here. It's separate from this piece. So you lift that up. And then we get two hinges on the face mask. And that's going to go ahead and swing down right over there. And then you could go ahead and put that on right there, and that looks awesome. I really like that a lot. One of the better face plates that we've seen for a Bumblebee figure. So yeah, that came out looking really good. I really dig that. I don't know how I keep screwing that up, but yeah, sometimes I'm a dodo. Sometimes I make a dumb dumb moves. And then we get some nice. Well, I guess this isn't really light piping, but I love how you can see the blue right over here. If you sh if you shine the light behind that comes out even more. I don't know. Seems to be fine without the light behind it anyway though. But yeah, I really like the little inner workings and all the gunmetal coloring that we get throughout on this guy. It looks really cool. I love how the arms came out over here. That is just great. Oop, that's not tabbed in all the way. That's supposed to tab in right there. That's supposed to be tabbed in, but I want to observe the details some more because we have some very nice silver paint right there and on the elbows. Looking really good. I like how the hands look even, you know. He has the yellow and that black color. Really nice looking piece, man. I'm really digging it. Yeah, that is awesome. Wow. Very good looking Bumblebee. I just love it. And then we get some die cast right here towards the bottom. So it, this piece right over here along with the feet. I think this is actually plastic. Nope, I think this is die cast. This is die cast metal too. So yeah, we get some die cast right there and right there. That's my sound test anyway. And here's looking at the back, looking pretty good. Now a very cool feature with this is that he does have a stand uh, portability. So he has a bunch of ports over here. Uh, you could take a Figma stand or an SH Figuart stand and port it right into the very bottom. If you have another stand that'll fit where the screw goes, well, you could put it over there too. So yeah. But we'll be you a Cochino, but yeah, you could port them in here, you could port them in there, and then there's no ports right there uh, aside for the port for the stinger. And uh, let's see if an SH Figuart stand will fit into that too. It looks like it will. So yeah, you get three different porting options, but if you port right here, it looks like it's going to start coming detached and you don't really want to do that. So yeah, use the Kulo, just, just stick to the Kulo. Now to get into the articulation of this figure, I really like it by the way. You can move the head up that much, which is pretty good, and he'll look down only that much. If you want to push this whole tab section in, you can make him look downward even further, but it looks a little bit weird. You also get side to side movement over here, and uh, no head tilt, and again you can move these little pieces any direction you'd like. I do have this properly tabbed in, as you saw earlier, I did not, so yeah, I have that tabbed in the way it's supposed to. And you you can move the shoulders outward this far, and I guess if you actually wanted these panels to be behind here, but I think it's better like this. But anyway, you can rotate the shoulder all the way around, and then you also get this other joint right over here that bends up and down within the arm, and then you could rotate right above the elbow, and then you get a single jointed elbow that bends in a little bit more than 90 degrees. You get a wrist swivel, and I love the hand articulation. Uh, you get knuckle joints right here for all of them, and then you also get a bend in the finger right over there. Uh, the index finger can move on its own and bends in the middle and then the rest of the fingers all bend together and you could bend those right there as well. So that's very cool. Uh, we get a waist swivel right over here and then hips can move outward that much and he'll kick forward pretty far and he can kick back. You get a mid thigh swivel right there. He bends once at the knee, uh, not quite 90 degrees. I wish he could bend a little bit more than that. That's probably the one point of articulation that I wish he had more of. And then his ankles are pretty sweet. He has double jointed ankle pivots or two ankle pivots. So you can see he bends like that and then he also bends at the foot right over there which is very cool. And if you wanted to untab this whole piece that I had talked about earlier, you can get the ankle moving down and up but if you have that tabbed in it won't really move up and down and you also have up and down movement for this heel piece right over here as well as toe articulation now measuring out this bumblebee to the top of his head you can see he's at about seven inches tall so the top of those wings at about seven and a half inches man 
And here's our Bumblebee size comparison. We have the Human Alliance Bumblebee, our masterpiece movie Bumblebee, and the 2007 Camaro a Deluxe Class Bumblebee, and our The Last Night Bumblebee right over there. You can see how the Deluxes have gotten smaller. But yeah, I mean, these are both really good figures. I still like this Human Alliance Bumblebee. Uh, I thought this was a very good figure for the amount of money you spent on it. I mean, this guy was only, what, like 30 bucks? Like, really, really cheap figure for what you're getting over here, you know? So, yeah, good piece, but yeah, I gotta say, my favorite one is the Masterpiece. Then here's our Masterpiece movie, Bumblebee, next to the Revenge of the Fallen Leader Class Optimus Prime, which is actually one of my favorite Optimus Prime figures in my collection, and I think the height difference between these two is perfect. I love how those look side by side. I am contemplating on whether or not I should get the Masterpiece movie Optimus. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I might get it. And then here's Masterpiece Bumblebee next to the Masterpiece Blue Streak, which shares the same body mold as Smokescreen. So yeah, you can see the, these movie Masterpiece figures are a little bit larger in scale compared to our G1 Masterpieces. And then for your Masterpiece Bumblebee size comparison, here we have our G1 Masterpiece next to our movie Masterpiece. And yeah, you can see how much larger and brighter this new Masterpiece is compared to the G1. And then here he is once again next to the Marvel Legends Big Time No Let Down Spider. Oh, yeah. Get a Bumblebee, man, what an awesome looking figure this is. Uh, I absolutely love it, yeah. Now, it's not perfect, it has its imperfections here and there, but man, I've been having a great time with this piece. I am so grateful to have it. Again, thank you so much, Alfonso. Thank you, Siri Emerald. I mean, I, I'm just very, very pleased with this piece. I highly recommend it, and I hope you guys highly recommend this review. I do appreciate it when people share my videos, so thank you so much if you've been doing that. Uh, if you wanna hit the like button, because you like the video so much, you gotta hit a button, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the figure. Let me know what you think of the review. If you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more Shardimus Prime videos coming your way. And if you've already subscribed, make sure you hit that notification bell so you know immediately when the next Shardimus Prime video is posted. And I gotta give a big thanks to all these awesome people over here for taking the extra step in supporting this YouTube channel. If you're in a position to do so and you'd like to, check the link in the description below. If you want to stay in touch with me, you can follow me on the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and a photo gallery over at Shardimus Prime.net should be up there soon. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.